OK, let's go to one of the dominant political issues of the moment right here in Australia. We speak, of course, about housing affordability. The government has rejected Labor's policy of winding back negative gearing, but at least one of its own ranks thinks it's dragging its feet. That's right. The member for Bennelong, John Alexander, says a rethink is needed, and he joins us in the studio now. Good morning to you. Morning. Good morning. So you've had a very personal experience with this. Your, your partner's daughter went to many auctions, and you saw firsthand that sense of um, defeat that people feel when they can't enter the house. Market. Well, yes, and it's happening more and more. And, and it was one of the reasons why I commissioned the, the inquiry into home ownership. And uh, there was two concerns. One was stability in the market, because there's extraordinary volatility at the moment. And the other was the first home buyer being locked out of the market. And we found that it was the investor, uh, buoyed by neutral gearing and positive gearing, not, not negative gearing, uh, that's, that's dominating that, that market. So given the fact that if you're finding that it is an investor, what do you think about Labor's proposal to pay back negative gearing? I mean, shouldn't that be an option that should be looked at by the government well, as well? I think this is one of the, the real problems when politics interferes with the development of, of policy. And you've got one side saying, well, we're going to get rid of negative gearing, so the other side says, well, we're not going to touch it. Whereas, uh, to me, if you get rid of negative gearing, you, you take away one of the foundations that creates the, the value of real estate. So you'll crash the market. Uh, we have a problem uh, with the laws as they are. But I think if you look at what APRA did in restricting uh, lending to investors to 80%, that had a dramatic and immediate impact. Uh, my thinking is if we could calibrate that figure, we could then control housing inflation driven by investors, much the same as the RBA controls inflation by controlling the prime rate. We hear the Treasurer Scott Morrison is very keen to put housing affordability front and centre in the May budget. So would he be receptive, in your view, politically, I guess, to suggestions of winding back at the edges, negative gearing, or bringing down that capital gains tax discount that investors get? There's, there's lots of ways of, of doing this. And I think the thing is you've got to look at uh, having a counterbalancing mechanisms Whatever you take away from the investor to cool the investor, you've got to give to the home buyer to empower the home buyer and, and maintain stability in the market. And, and those need to be there needs to be a counterbalancing mechanism there. So we've had lots and lots of meetings, lots and lots of input, uh, and I'm uh, wanting a, a contest of ideas. So if my ideas can be beaten by somebody else, that's great. We're better off. But don't don't just be negative, which is you know so much the culture of politics. But, these but days. some might say that the time for ideas has come and gone, and now it's the time for action. Because I mean, just even recently, the figures show. 18% year-on-year growth in Sydney, 13% in Melbourne, and this is after the APRA rules of tightening those regulations for banks in terms of, you know, putting more restrictions on them loaning money. So the current th system just is, doesn't seem to be there working. There are some very, very scary uh, statistics. We're at a 60-year low of home ownership. Uh, the projection is that home ownership will be less than 50%. 84% of investors have only one property. Uh, you might think that's good that there's 84 per cent of investors, but it means that 16 per cent of investors own everything else. So what does that figure come when home ownership gets to under 50 per cent? I think that's scary. So you'll have a market that's dominated by speculative opportunistic investors rather than the stabilising effect on the market of greater levels of home ownership. The Victorian government over the weekend announced it was taking stamp duty payments off any property up to $600,000 in value. There might be a similar proposal here in New South Wales, the state government here. Is that, was that a good step, foot first step, by the Victorian government? I think, I think it was, and a little bit of a restriction on investors. Yes. So that was uh, very similar to uh, my ideas that we need to have counterbalancing mechanisms that wouldn't do you any good in Sydney because the average house is over a million dollars. Maybe it should be for the first $600,000 of any, any property. Mm. Uh, but uh, I favour that uh, uh, looking at being able to use super in yes. some way for home buyers to, to, uh, to buy a home. And I was going to ask you about that because that is a suggestion you've put out there that, that young people especially should be able to tap into their super but then many might say well that's just going to flood the market more with financing tools instead of you know actually creating supply which is, which is where the problem is. Well you've got to remember that if you've got the mechanism to cool the investor by mm -hmm. putting a little bit of heat uh, in, the, in the home buying part of the market that, that will keep things stable. Uh, I think the most important thing if you're going to use super is to understand and 
that the property bought with super remains the property of your super. If you sell it, the money goes straight back into your super. Mm. Uh, at the end of, uh, as uh, Scott Morrison said recently, that, that one of the great problems is that people aren't getting to the market until they're 45, they retire at 65, then they cash in their super to pay out their house. So the very money that was meant to be used for their retirement has actually gone into an unassessable asset. So those people have full claim uh, on the age pension, they have actually used their super to buy their house. So uh, it would be better if we were more proactive and then uh, it would make that, uh, that, that home, uh, they'd get into it earlier, they'd have the benefit of the escalation of value and they'd have a, a real asset when they retired. Uh, finally, you, all, the, all very good ideas, as you say, it should be a contest of ideas, but any budget is framed politically as well. Do you think there's the political will within your government at the moment to tackle anything seriously regarding housing affordability that might put offside a block of voters? Well, the sportsman in me says uh, no guts, no glory. Uh, and it's time to have some courage. It's time to put uh, ideas and plans and vision forward. Uh, to me, uh, the name Commonwealth of Australia is losing credibility because fewer and fewer people uh, are experiencing that Commonwealth. Uh, if we get home ownership back to where it was or even greater, uh, well then we will have a situation of Commonwealth and there's so many benefits to, to home ownership. It makes people more stable, families more stable, communities more stable. It's a foundation of the creation of wealth and uh, I think of all countries we should be able to lead the world in this area. All right, John Alexander, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Thank you.